Pues el ministerio, pues. Eh.
Prayers. Almighty God, who in our infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed us of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of humanity. We beseech you to look upon with abundant favor these servants, whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under the deliberation in so just and faithful a manner to pronounce your own glory and to advance the good of those whose interests have committed to their charge. Amen. Amen. Item number two. Administration of oath. Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, on the 16th of June 2022, the Clerk to Parliament received a notification that the election of Honorable Puizera Edi Wagahungu as Member of Parliament representing Bukimbiri County in Kisoro District was challenged and subsequently nullified by the Court of Appeal under Petition Number 072 of 2021. In accordance with Article 81 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, the clerk to Parliament notified the Electoral Commission of the existence of this vacancy in Parliament. A by-election was held on 16th August 2022. The Electoral Commission has, in writing, communicated the results to the clerk to Parliament, indicating that Mr. Kwizera Edward Hungu was elected as the Member of Parliament representing Bukimbiri County constituency in Kisoro district. Mr. Speaker, the member is available and ready to take and prescribe the oath of allegiance and the, of member of parliament. Mr. Speaker, I seek your indulgence to allow him to undertake the aforementioned oath. Authorization granted. I, is that Edward Gahungu, swear in the name of Almighty that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Uganda and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So help me God. 
I, Kizera Edward Gahungu, swear in the name of Almighty God, that I will be faithful. I will give faithful <coughs> service to this parliament and support and hold this constitution of Republic of Uganda as by law established. So help me God. <laughs> Uh, Honorable Quizera, you're no stranger to this house, you're a historical member, you only took a very short break. And in no time, your voters have returned you. So you know the proceedings and how we conduct business in this house. But I want to give you a copy of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and a copy of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda so that they enable you to do your duty effectively. Congratulations. Please have a seat. Right, Honorable Speaker, on the 16th of June 2022, the Clerk to Parliament received a notification that the election of Honorable Orone Derrick as Member of Parliament representing Gogonyo County in Palisa District was challenged and subsequently nullified by the Court of Appeal in the election petition number. 48 of 2021. In accordance with Article 281 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, the clerk to Parliament notified the Electoral Commission of the existence of this vacancy in Parliament. A by election was held on 16th of August 2022. The Electoral Commission has, in writing, communicated the results to the clerk to Parliament indicating that Mr. Oron Nederik was elected as the member of parliament representing Ogonyo County in Parisa district. Mr. Speaker, the member is available and ready to take the oath of member of parliament and oath of allegiance. Honorable Speaker, I seek your indulgence to allow him undertake the aforementioned oath. Authorization granted. I, Orone Derek, swear in the name of the Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance of, to the Republic of Uganda and that I will preserve protect and defend the constitution. So help me God. I, Orone Derek, swear in the name of the almighty God that I'll give faithful service to this parliament and support and uphold the constitution of the Republic of Uganda as by law established. So help me God. I'm not going to be able to do that. 
Uh, Honorable Ronnie Delk, you have been part of us in the 11th parliament. We are glad you're back uh, with more vigor. And I'm very sure the people who have returned you know that you're going to do much better and work much harder for them. So you are no stranger to the conduct of this house. You don't need to be taken around. But uh, here is a copy of the constitution and a couple of the rules of procedure to facilitate your legislative purpose here. Congratulations. And please have your seat. Item number three, communication from the chair. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I will come you to today's sitting. Um, in the VIP gallery this afternoon, we have a staff from the National Assembly of Zambia. They include Mr. Jeffrey Mumbi, Deputy Director, ICT. Uh, Mr. Francis Singuni, Systems and Network Specialist. Mr. Murima Chibuye, Systems and Network Specialist. And Ms. Victoria Mwaba, ICT Officer. Uh, they have come here on a benchmarking visit with the staff of Parliament of Uganda. And now they are in the gallery to uh, follow the proceedings of this house. Please join me in welcoming them. Thank you. Once again, I want to congratulate our colleagues who have just been sworn in. And uh, we are really happy because in Parliament, we are a family. Losing one of us in whichever way, you know, makes us sad. So we are glad our two colleagues have come back. Uh, colleagues, if you have any colleague in the Parliament in the process who didn't support you, that was just campaign and politics. Now we are back as a family. I don't want you to be moving around to say you came to my constituency to fight me. You know, it happens that way. Uh, that's a process is part and parcel of the process. Uh, we are now family. I want to implore the government chief to ensure that uh, these two colleagues are deployed in committees quickly so that they can catch up with the business uh, of the house. Uh, today, colleagues, I will not have matters of national importance. We have a clogged order paper. Tomorrow, usually Thursday is our day, day for members. So tomorrow I'll give you uh, more time with the prime minister and all other issues. So I, I really um, want us to proceed, but there are very few issues uh, which I wanted uh, to raise. Uh, one, is uh, in regard to the flooding at the Simba Hydro Power Station and the panic it has caused. I have seen Umeme has released a road shading schedule, uh, but we are told that we have uh, an installed capacity of 1,378.1 megawatts, and we consume much less of that. So now, Isimba is a dam of only 180 megawatts. And we don't even consume a thousand megawatts as a country. But I've seen already, we are going, we are rushing it Kenya to be importing 60 megawatts. I have, I have seen a uh, road shading schedule already released quickly. Now, the issue is not about the flooding and all that, but the panicking, the, the panicking has really scared very many. Most of you have today have received around nine members over the same issue. So because of uh, how serious this issue is, uh, the minister is required to appear tomorrow and make a substantive statement before this house. 
which we shall debate for some time so that your views are heard and we can give a contribution on how best this challenge can be overcome. But also our colleagues in our oversight our programs. I remember there were very many issues on uh, the quality of work at Isimba and Karuma, the quality of work. Uh, because I don't know how it could be designed without anticipating flooding of that nature, you know? So we need to look into these issues seriously. The Committee for Natural Resources, I'm glad I saw the chairman in television saying he's going there. So I hope uh, indeed they go and they update the house on what they found on ground. But the minister, in the meantime, tomorrow should be one of the first items uh, we should have uh, tomorrow. Uh, colleagues, I want to give an opportunity to our two colleagues who promised to lay on the table uh, some important uh, documents. Uh, one of Chivumbi, uh, he promised to lay on the table uh, the alleged resolution he has on Akiak company resolutions, which we passed here. So, Honorable Koriga, I invite you today on the table. Uh, I will give you an opportunity. Yeah, let me just, it's, this is still part of my communication. I'm still communicating. Right, Honorable Speaker, I thank you for this opportunity. Right, Honorable Speaker, I have uh, with me. This is 4th January, the Permanent Secretary Treasury, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Kampala. I have a copy of all the resolutions result of our debate on this supplementary. And in this resolution, specifically for ATIAC, this is what it says. And signed by who? It is signed by Waishwa Henry Yoel for Clark Parliament. This is what it says, the details I'm leaving out. Appropriation of Ugandan shilling, Uganda shillings, 180 billion to Uganda Development Corporation, 108 billion to Uganda Development Corporation for mechanized for mechanization for Chuck Sugar Works. I have highlighted the paragraph I'm interested in. The approved supplementary expenditure include 180 billion to Uganda Development Corporation through vote 105, Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperative, specifically for the purpose of equipment for purpose for the purchase of equipment to be leased to attack sugar works. That's the resolution, right honorable speaker, that was extracted. Right honorable speaker, and I beg to let please. Right honorable speaker, I have a copy of the answer of that day. Specifically I'll go for where the vote was put. Right Honorable Speaker, it was chaired by the Deputy Speaker. And this is what she put. I now put the question that the report of the committee as presented by the chairman of the report of the committee was adopted. So I beg to lay. I now go and pick the report of the committee that was adopted. And I will specifically go for where attack recommendation was. This is what it says. The committee recommends approval of 108 billion for acquiring additional equity shares in attack sugar works. And that government and that government and all internal control mechanisms 
over track works are uh, strengthened within three months. So right now, the speaker, the recommendation of the committee was specifically for acquisition of equity. Now, the resolution talks about donating money to UDC to go and acquire equipment. Consequently, the country lost 108 billion. And I beg to lay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? That's it. Th those are the documents. On the other one, that's why I to another speaker. I have a, a big concern with the clerk, but because this is the way he communicates parliamentary resolutions, not through, not through forwarding hazards. That's why I'm forcing him to give me the one on. No, no, you on. don't use the language of forcing. Language. No, that's why I'm going to yeah. court to ensure I get the one on, on Blisse and to ascertain whether it has also not been altered. Thank you. Uh, Honorable, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going, uh, Clark, you pass on these documents to my office for consideration. Thank you. No, 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 please. Honorable, this is a closed matter. No, we, di we discussed it yesterday. Number one, I need to verify the authenticity of the documents given. Now you want me to start discussing documents which I've not verified. It's one's word against the other. So please give me that chance. Okay? Yes. No, you can always guide him on it. He has not run away from you. Um, the other one was uh, Honorable uh, Gilbatoranya. Gilbatoranya Honorable Korik uh, of, of uh, prisoners who are on remand on the orders of ministers. Okay? And then you said you also had another list of people who are arrested on offenses of uh, of land. Yes, but then now they are charged with treason. So we said you avail that list to us. Thank you, Red Owl Speaker. Red Owl Speaker, as you directed yesterday, that I should bring and lay on table list of prisoners under minister's order. Right, our speaker, I got those list. is signed by Milton Teo for the Commissioner General of, of Prison. In total... No, can you read, because you said they were arrested on minister's order. Yes. Just read the content, not the total. I want to know, I want to get where the minister's order is. Thank you, Red House Speaker. According to the commissioner, he says, "Please find a list of inmates who are pending minister's order in our custody. Who are pending minister's order in our custody? Who? Who, who are pending minister's order?" in our custody. Who are pending? Yes, they are, they are waiting for the minister's order. They are waiting for the minister's order. Exactly. So in, can, you, can you correct your submission yesterday? Let, let our speaker. Yeah, because, honorable colleague, yes, yes. yesterday you said there are, um, there are prisoners in prison on minister's order. Yes. Not pending minister's order. On minister's order. Those are two different. Red, are red, two red, different. red, 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 now, what I'm just asking you is very simple. The document you have read is to the contrary. So I'm just saying that clear the record of yesterday, you substitute it with today's record. Very simple. I'm not saying withdraw your list or take it away. No. 
Thank you, Red House Speaker. Mm. Red House Speaker, calling your guidance. We have inmates who are in prison who are pending minister's order. In other words, which minister? The Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Mm. Red House Speaker, those inmates in total, we have 33 of them. And some of them have taken 10 years, others 20 years in prison. According to the commissioner, the commissioner says they are confused and they don't know what to do. Can you pass on the document to me? I will. And, and, and the orders depend strictly in the hand of the minister. No, uh, pass on the document to the clerk. I want the clerk to read the document properly. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The clerk, can you read the document for us? Because I want a clear record. If there is a letter, so I want us to know the content of the letter and the date. This is a letter from Uganda Prison Service signed by Milton Teo on behalf of the Commissioner General of Prisons to the Chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Defense and Internal Affairs. Attention, Honorable Lanya Gilbert, and it is dated 17th August 2022. As order. Forwarded herewith, please find a list of inmates who are pending minister's order in our custody. Your letter of the, of the same subject dated 16th August 2022 refers. Our records indicate that. Please note that the judiciary took up this matter and the office of the Honorable the principal judge is working on it. Thank you. So, Honorable Ranya, you wrote to the uh, prison's authority as the chairman of Internal Affairs, Defense and Internal Affairs Committee, because that's how they've addressed you. Uh, Red House Speaker, yesterday, as you directed me to lay the list, I wrote to the commissioner officially to avail me with the list. And today, he has given me the list. So I request you, Honorable Boranya, yes. to also lay on the table the letter they are referring to which you wrote. Yes, I, 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 have, I have a copy. Please kindly lay it on the table because they are responding to you as a chairperson of the Committee on no. Defense. Uh, from, from this letter, they, they, they are to the committee, but they say, attention. Mm -hmm. Honorable Lanya Gilbert, yeah. because they are aware that but I am not the chair. You remember of parliament, you're the one who wrote. I don't know why they didn't respond to you. But anyway, this is uh, good. It's okay. Uh, the record is now clear. Exactly. The record is clear. I think you wanted to clear the record of yesterday yes, yes. and substitute it with today's record. Yes, sir. Uh, I, refer, yeah. I refer this. It's a serious issue. I refer this to the committee on defense and internal affairs to investigate the matter and uh, report back in two weeks. Thank you, Red House Since Speaker. it's outside. And uh, second, Red House Speaker, there were second, second issues. The, the second matter is, I, I told the House yesterday that there are other people who were arrested from my district on land matters. And on reaching Kampala, they changed the charges into treason. Right now, they are being tried in court martials. Someone who has never been, one is the chairman LC1, and another one is the secretary for, for the LC1. Right now, they're in Kigo prison. They were arrested on the 16th of June, 2026. Now, seven years down the road, 2016, 2016. Right now, they are being tried in court martial. I do not know why the government behaves that way. The list are here. We have Opeyo Charles, Okelo Patrick Ajulu, Okech Richard, Oto Kenneth, and Ojok Sam. They are in Kiko prison being tried by court martial. Thank you. I beg to lay. 
Thank you just for noting because the director of public prostitution, prostitution has the power to apply any charges on a person, whether you've been arrested for murder and be reduced or change it to this, depending on the evidence. So since it's a court matter, and uh, we cannot discuss matters before court here, uh, this is for noting. Yes, yes, there is no way I can go to the judiciary and say they preferred wrong charges on someone when I don't have any details. But uh, Chair Rigo Affairs wanted to guide us on one of the matters. So let me give her a chance. Then when I was such cool. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Um, I just wanted to, to offer some information. The, uh, the orders which are for the minister's attention, like he's saying, can arise in two circumstances. If um, juveniles have been to the minister for justice, who is the responsible minister under that docket, and he has to sit to decide that those people should be moved from there. Sometimes they even need to, you know, some of them get in when they are, say, like 14 uh, or, say, 16, and then he becomes a ch an adult because we know that a child is below 18. So those are also some of the cases. The second type are those who are juvenile, who are, like, mentally derailed. And those are the ones that are handled by the judiciary. In the letter, there was reference to the, the judiciary handling them. So those are people that are reserved for those two offices. But it doesn't really mean, when they say pending minister's order, he has to come up, to, they inform him and he comes up to decide on that. Then on the second issue we're talking about, if you um, are a civilian and say you have a firearm, then you're bringing yourself under the ambit of the, the UPDF Act. If you're found, say, stealing and you have a firearm, you can be tried in the military court martial because of that. You're not a soldier. And if you don't have a license, why do you have the firearm? And my advice would be that first contact the Minister for Justice before you alarm the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Sashkova. Thank you all very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, one leg I concur with my senior. Those cases are real. And what Honorable Lanya is pointing out is true to that extent. The juveniles or the lunatics are not supposed to stay in prison, but they are kept in prison awaiting the minister's orders. So once that order is received by prison during the process, then the Co colleagues, let's be cautious. We don't declare people lunatics. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> when, when we've not yet verified, <laughs> right, 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 we just speaker. have a risk we don't know. There's no any other explanation on the risk. Yes, right, right, right speaker, it is a process. There is the medical process and examinations that take place before they are certified to mm -hmm. be mentally deranged. So that is the proper process. But where the minister delays, it means that people are not supposed to be kept in prison. They stay in prison, and this is causing a constraint to the prison authorities and to the liberties and the rights of those who could be mad. The second leg, right, Honorable Speaker, there is a full judgment that stops the prosecution of an armed civilian under the court martial. There is no reason why that should be. Probably what we would do is to task government Simply to put that people who are arrested on matters of land, how they end up now being accused of prison is what is disturbing. And I think this parliament shouldn't shy away from tasking the responsible minister to come with a position because this is happening. You disagree on pure family issues, the following day you are arraigned before court on prison charges. And the fact that they've stayed there for long, the seven years, this is too much for a speaker. And I think as parliament cannot gloss over that gross abuse of the right, the incarceration it is causing on their families and their lives, I think we can now task the attorney general, brief parliament as to the processes under which land conflict degenerates and is turned into a prison case. And I think this parliament is in the better position 
that's the right to know at any given item. Thank you. Thank you, honorable colleagues. I want to move into that line. These are matters that are very clear. Andorin. And uh, if it was, if it had been specified that they are before the court martial, I would maybe move otherwise. But treason can also be in other courts, not, not court martial. So I would, uh, I would really to give the people with the judiciary their chance to handle their matter, to handle their matter. There are clear processes under the judiciary in the rules on how those matters uh, can be handled. And whenever we've attempted here, we've, you know, sometimes it's a very thin line, which I wouldn't want this house to be the one uh, 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 to cross. But on the one of, uh, of those ones awaiting minister's orders, instead of the Committee on Defense, I'm going to refer the list to the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs uh, for action and reports back in two weeks' time. I think that's, that's, that's okay. So, uh, uh, colleagues, le let's, let's move on. Uh, uh, Lop, you had an issue? Uh, 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 Oh, yes, I'm just going to allow one to. Yes, Lope is coming. Then I pick procedure, then on my communication. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, the shutdown of uh, Isimba Dam plant has already plunged this country into an energy crisis. And uh, already in some areas, they have started experiencing intermittent power supply. But this is a power dam, a plant, which was commissioned hardly three years ago. Two years, actually. And uh, that uh, it has already shut down in this short duration of time. Even if it is still under the, the period of uh, defects liability. Mr. Speaker, it puts into serious question the structural integrity of this facility. And uh, Mr. Speaker, an investigation must be instituted to find out what has happened, because this speaks volumes about uh, the work which could have been shorter, the work could have been compromised. That's why it has shut down. But uh, Mr. Speaker, most importantly, with the energy surplus we have. Because if you were to aggregate, as you mentioned, I try to aggregate the energy generation that we have from hydroelectricity, we have 1,773 megawatts. You aggregate that with the thermal energy, which is 101, Bacas energy, which is 111, <laughs> Solar energy, which is 60 uh, megawatts. If you add all this, they come to exactly the, the, the figure you mentioned 1,346 megawatts. No, 78.1. 78 uh, but the peak demand, the maximum demand we have, as you mentioned, is about 700. So the balance is well over 500, the surplus, the excess. So if you removed or absorbed the 183 of Isimba, there would still be a cool balance of over 300 megawatts. So would we therefore be justified to import energy from Kenya? I'm yet to see even the cost of the Kenya evacuation plan, whether there is logic in that anyway. It is good that you have directed the minister to come, but uh, the truth of the matter, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, our electricity generation supply is more than enough, and we don't need to import. Now, colleagues, uh, information, please. Hello. Yeah, but but colleagues, yeah. we yeah. are risking debating a statement which is coming tomorrow, and I want to allow a debate tomorrow on the statement. Oh, no. 
Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the chair. Of course, of course, you gave him your floor. Chair, the so, small information I've been, I want to give the law is that a country has been paying annually billions of money for dimmed energy. And the argument is we must have a standby capability in case of an emergency in the power mix. And every day, this, this dimmed energy is not used, but we pay billions of, of shillings. So where do we now stand with the money we've been paying, and I know the companies there in Nama, wherever they are, at this time, where are they? Because they should have been handy to alleviate this situation. That's the information I wanted to give. Thank you. Colleagues, if, if your comment is on the Isimba question, okay? Please reserve it for tomorrow because the minister is bringing a statement. Yes, uh, honorable member, Prosecutor. Thank you, right honorable speaker. I don't want to depart from your ruling, but right honorable speaker, Mulago Hospital, when the power cut down came in, the first place that I was surprised that could be shut down was Mulago. National Referral Hospital. I request that as the minister, and the Minister of Health is here, I've even been sharing with her. If the minister is coming, then that matter, whatever situation happens in the power sector, let our hospitals not be affected. There are people in ICU. If you load shared Mulago Hospital, you know, you said the national, regional, re, national, and then the regional federal hospitals. What happens to the patient? The worst case scenario should never be on our hospital where there are patients, where there are Ugandans struggling with life, heart problems, and then you just know the shed. So that is the Thank matter you. I wanted to request. I don't know if that's procedurally, even request the Minister of Health to come oh. on that issue. Oh, 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 Colleagues, you're trying to sneak in matters under procedure. Don't abuse the rule. The rule is very clear. Let's be clear. Anyone raising the issue to do with the Simba and the power cuts and what? Tomorrow, I have directed the crack. It should be among the first items. And the minister is going to appear with a statement. And I will give you time so that the minister will question the minister from here. Okay? So let's do that tomorrow. Not, not about the symbol and power. Okay? Yes, Honorable Agnes up there. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable. I would like to react on the issue of flooding of Isimba. No, no please, no. please. No, 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 please, please. Right Honorable. On, honorable, when the, the speaker, when, power. when the speaker is speaking, you have to take your seat. Find uh, if you want, colleagues, if you want this chair to be helpful to you, respect it. Tomorrow you are having a statement. That's it. Okay. Next item. Honorable Chibadia. I hope. Th it's thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, my issue is not on his Simba. Right Honorable Speaker, my issue is uh, related to Honorable Gilbert Olanya's issue. But I've already ruled on it. So you can't take us back. Honorable, you can't take us back. I'm sorry. Okay? Item Next number item. four. Statement by Minister on releases to the road fund for the first quarter of the financial year 2022-2023. Honorable Minister of Finance. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honourable Speaker, Honourable Members. Uh, this is a statement to Parliament on the disbursement schedule of road maintenance funds and the status of regulations on operationalization of the road fund. Right Honourable Speaker, during the plenary sitting of Tuesday 9, August 2022, a matter of national importance was raised by Honorable Opio 
somewhere. MP Kole County North. Honorable oh, no, oh, no, Minister, did you give us a copy of the statement? Is it uploaded? As I left, it was being uploaded. No, I don't know if it has reached. Honorable oh, no, Minister, ensure your statement is uploaded. Let's be handling another item because. Right, whenever I can have very no, it's not about looks for it. So I request one of your minister, let Clark help you. Clark kind of approved that uh, uh, the statement because then the next, as we work on the next item, okay. On our minister of finance, we are still with you, we have your item, uh, so we shall be handling others. So get the copy, have it uploaded. I don't want to be disturbed during the debate. With members saying procedure, we don't have copies. So let's have it. Next item, we shall come back. Let's stand over this item. We shall come back immediately. Item number five, laying of papers, five one, parliamentary pension scheme by annual report for the period ended December 31st, 2021. Honorable Akajara or his representative, commissioner. Mm -hmm. Commission. Right on our speaker, I was looking around to see on our Kajara, but a report for the period that ended 31st December 2021 for the parliamentary pension scheme. I beg to let. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, but colleagues, this is a statement for information uh, purposes. Yes, yes. Okay? Yes. So we need all of us to study it because this is your pension. And uh, you need to take in interest so that you can generate ideas that will help us to grow our pension fund. Oh, you, there is some procedure, right, on the speaker? Yes, on the school. Is that there has been an update pension scheme upping the threshold upon which they can lend members of parliament. And we thought they should have done us justice if they had updated that one, to say that you must be having 70% of your emoluments intact before you can access a facility from the parliamentary pension scheme, which I find is way above the expectations of members and our being able to access the fund, oh, Mr. Speaker. Honorable. Can, can you therefore direct right to the speaker that they update that position, which is uh, contrary to what has been existing, which is arbitrary, which is untenable, which goes against the interests of members? Would you direct right to the speaker that that be? also added so that we can have a comprehensive Thank assessment you. of the report. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Member, you read it. You don't know whether it's updated or not. So I guide you that you first go and read the report. If you find anything missing, you handle uh, from there. But also, colleagues, issues of uh, members borrowing where they are borrowing are not issues for camera and plenary. You know, those they are not issues for here. Those are issues that are administrative, please. Let's be cautious. Item uh, 5-2. No, uh, that was procedure. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, people get these offices given their responsibility. Right Honorable Speaker, we have a person responsible for pension. It's not a matter of coming to bring a document and drop it on the table and wait for anybody who is, who is around it to lay it. Assuming the commissioner was not there, who would lay So Right Honorable Speaker, I would request that through your office, Right Honorable Speaker, some of these responsible people in these positions, they should not abuse them. They should not take them for granted that for you, Gandhi, have a cup of tea and leave the rest to handle what is there. No, uh, honorable colleague, 
Honorable Rakajara came to my office yesterday and sought permission that he won't be my Another important business. So what is important is the document has been laid, and any of the colleagues assigned can always do that. Honorable, yeah. of right, that. honorable speaker. Um, I'm very grateful to for this report to be tabled before parliament. It's just being laid. Uh, considering that this pension scheme is so so important to us. I was once a member of this pension scheme. There are so many issues that need to be brought to the attention of members. Can you give us a date so that we can all come and ask questions? It is not just a question of laying, because when they lay without giving us time to look into the issue, it will just be gone. And yet some of these issues are very, very critical. Thank you. Thank Peter. you. Uh, Honorable colleague, that's why I've told you this report is for information purposes. The pension scheme has an annual general meeting. And uh, this is what you scrutinize, this is what you discuss, and you present your views. Issues of pension scheme will not be brought on pre on, in the plenary. They, please, these are our internal matters. These are our internal matters. So in the case, there must be procedures. In the case uh, you need a special general uh, assembly, it can be arranged. So, uh, and there must be procedures on how that one can be done. And I would uh, guide that indeed, we need to follow that procedure. Is it a procedure, Mark? No, Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to reinforce what you have said. We just had the annual general meeting, I think it was in April. And arising out of that annual general meeting, we made recommendations, which the commissioners, the board members have now come and brought an amendment to the Pension Act, which is before the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. So members, when the AGM is called, please attend. Okay. When I was uh, in the tennis parliament, I would only be mobilized by those who want to vote. Uh, I would fear I should go because I'm going to vote. But colleagues, this is your future. <laughs> this is your pension. Like Honor Wasara has said, when they call an annual general meeting, this is where they approve these reports. A resolution. Please always ensure that you attend. Next item. Item 5 2, laying of papers. Report of the delegation of Parliament of Uganda to the 26th session of the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, Honorable Chair on Climate Change or Representative? Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the report of the delegation of the Parliament of Uganda to the 26th session of the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework. Convention on Climate Change held in Glasgow, United Kingdom from 31st to 12th of November 2021. I beg to lay. Thank you, uh, Honorable. Uh, the report is also for information purposes. So, colleagues, I urge you to read it. You are seeing issues of climate change, you know, that we are facing. It's very, very important. We are going to deposit this report in the Library, uh, please uh, refer to it. It will help you in your legislative. Next item. Item number six, motion for resolution of parliament to authorize government to borrow up to 20 million United States dollars from the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, 30 million United States dollars from the Saudi Fund for Development, and 20 million United States dollars from the OPEC Fund for International Development for the construction and equipping of the Uganda Heart Institute project. Honorable Minister of Finance. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, uh, this motion was moved uh, for the resolution of parliament 
to authorize government to borrow up to 20 million United States dollars from the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, 30 million United States dollars from the Saudi Fund for Development, and 20 million United States dollars from the OPEC Fund for International Development for the construction and equipping of the Uganda Heart Institute project. The motion was moved under Article 159.2, Rule 178.2b, and Rule 68 of our Rules of Procedure. And now, I'm made to understand that the report is now ready for the committee to present it to the House. Is the motion seconded? Honorable Bahati, Honorable Fox Odoye, Honorable K. Farida Nader, Patanwa. The whole house. The motion is seconded. So, uh, Honorable Minister, would you like to speak to the motion? Or oh, since the report is, uh, is ready, Chairman, please. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Chairman, you have 15 minutes. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, before I, I proceed, allow me lay on table the minutes of the proceedings of the meeting of the Committee on National Economy with the Uganda Art Institute and Minister of Finance. Uh, consider the government proposal to borrow. Allow me, Le. In the same vein, right honorable speaker, allow me, Le, on table, a copy of the report of the Committee on National Economy on the same proposal uh, to borrow. I beg to lay. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, this is a report of the Committee on National Economy on the proposal to borrow up to 20 million US dollars from the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, and 30 million United States dollars from the Saudi Fund, and 20 million US dollars from the OPEC Fund, International Development for the construction and equipping of the Grand Art Institute. Right Honorable Speaker, the committee, the National Economy considered the request by government to borrow up to those sums uh, in line with the, in accordance with Rule 178, 2B of the Parliamentary Rules of Procedure. And the background, it is estimated non-communicable diseases account for 56% of all deaths and 46% of the disease burden globally. This burden constitutes one of the major challenges to development in the 21st bearing the largest burden of non-communicable diseases. Uh, Let me speak uh, Globally, over 76% of the of cardiovascular deaths occur in low and middle income countries, of which 80% are due to heart attack. 7.4 that is 7.4 uh, million people, and the death due to stroke is 6.7 million people. It is estimated that one in four adults. high blood pressure, which can lead to cardiovascular diseases, stroke, or kidney failure. Accordingly, there is a 27% chance of Ugandans aged between 30 and 70 years 
video cardiovascular disease accounting for 9% of these deaths. Right honorable speaker, in consideration of this proposal to borrow, we held meetings with different stakeholders, but among them included the Parliamentary Committee on Health. And among the documentary reviews we had was also a report of the Parliamentary Committee on Health. Right honorable speaker, also had field activities to Uganda, Art Institute in Mulago, the current location, and the proposed site at Naguru, where the proposed Art Institute is to be uh, constructed. In terms of uh, alignment of the project, the National Planning Framework, uh, that honorable speaker, the Art Institute infrastructure project is an NDP3 core project intended to improve population health safety and the management. Uh, right honorable speaker, the committee in, in scrutinizing this loan also considered and made a review of the loan, previous loans under uh, uh, the Minister of Health. The emphasis, the poor performing loan. One of them is the Kalamoja Infrastructure Development Project, phase two, which we shall come back with a detailed response, probably when we get the opportunity on order paper, which is still at 0%. And the, and the other loan, which is the COVID-19 response and emergency preparedness project, which is at 22.8%. Though expiry is 2022 20, December. A project objective. The overall objective of this project is to contribute to NDP three strategic objective, like I mentioned earlier. Project outputs. Right honorable speaker and honorable members, the construction of the state of the art home for the Uganda Art Institute, that is three blocks, namely the clinical block research and laboratories, and nine typical floors, then staff and maintenance block, and others. Honorable Speaker, as the report was uh, uploaded, you see a number of project components, including civil works, supply and installation, consultancy, and others. Honorable Speaker, honorable members, Allow me go to 8.3 budgetary implication. Government has committed to provide counterpart funding for this project. The project is part of the public investment plan and is included in the Uganda Art Institute budget for financial year 2022-2023 under project code 1526. The project has a government of Uganda location of 4.15 billion to cater for engineering and design studies. Here that I have 15 minutes. Uh, project implementation arrangement. The project shall be implemented by Uganda Art Institute. Uh, and the project is as a, a four-year uh, implementation period. Now, 10 is the current debt situation of the country. Honorable Speaker, allow me to read this specific paragraph. The interim total public debt stock, as at end of March 2022, was 75.675 billion. That's about 49.4% of the GDP. This is a 7.8% increase from the stock recorded in June 2021. The committee, the committee was informed that the increase of the debt during the financial year is largely due to an increase in domestic debt by 14.1% in comparison with that at the end of the financial year 2021-2022. 
external debt continues to continues to to rise with the highest share of 61.6 percent of the total public debt for financial 2021-2022 parliament approved shillings 2.9 trillion as domestic borrowing for purposes of financing the budget no additional borrowing the approval of this loan will increase the external debt exposure for the for public and publicly guaranteed debt by US dollars, 70 million uh, dollars. Compliance with, now, with parliamentary rules of procedure. Checklist. Uh, I'm sure clearly casted on the board there and, uh, and the way it was assessed. The next are uh, the observations and recommendations. 12.1, the current set of the to the current premises of the Ghana Art Institute at Mulago National Referral Hospital and observed the following. One was inadequate space for expansion of services. The current facility is located at, located at level one, block C of New Mulago with no room for expansion. For instance, when the committee visited the Uganda Art Institute, there were equipment lying in the corridors because they could not be installed due to limited space. Two, the Uganda Art Institute has a modern cardiac catheterization facility and dedicated cardiac operation theater with the capacity to, to handle over 1,000 operations. That is procedures per year. However, is operating below capacity that is at 45 percent due to limited supportive space and care services some of the supportive care services are currently undertaken in the staircases and refurbished containers the current infrastructure conditions under which provision of cardiovascular medical services are provided at Uganda Art institute are unacceptable especially for both the safety of staff and patients and a gross contravention of medical operational standards. So the committee recommends that going forward, government should, address, should immediately address the constraints, that is inadequate working space and medical infrastructure in order to build a strong foundation for the Uganda Art Institute for it to become a center of excellence in the cardiovascular medical services. Uh, 12.1, increasing regional access to cardiovascular services. The committee was informed that since 2012, the number of patients that seek cardiac care at Uganda Art Institute has gone beyond the institute's capacity. For example, in 2014, the committee noted the one in four adults, i.e. 25% of Uganda population, uh, were applying for cardiovascular uh, services. The committee recommends that the government should support the Uganda Art Institute in implementing its strategic uh, plan by providing the Institute with adequate financial support to strengthen healthy promotion and prevention of cardiovascular diseases across the country. Financing terms, the committee noted that the share of the concessional loans has dropped by 16%, percent by 6 percent points, in the past five years, from 74% in June 2017 to 58% in June 2021. By December 2021, the share of the concessional loans had declined to 56.5%. In the recent past, government has continued to borrow for nine concessional terms on account of financing major infrastructure projects and budget support. The committee recommends that there is need for Minister of Finance to engage financiers with a view of improving the financing terms to more concessional or semi-concessional terms. That is for, in particular, increasing the repayment period of the Badea, OPEC, and, and the and the OPEC fund to at least 20 years. This will reduce the liquidity pressure of the department of the debt servicing and maximization of the project investment returns. 
Right Honorable Speaker, quality, next is quality of completed works. The committee noted that this project seeks to establish a state-of-the-art form for Uganda Art Institute. The construction will follow approved drawings. The drawings, all works will be done in accordance with the Uganda building regulations, as well as Uganda Art Institute, means of health regulations for delivery. The committee rest, recommends, therefore, the means of health and Uganda Art Institute to strengthen technical supervision of the construction works. That will be undertaken under this project to ensure good quality work, minimize cases of delayed completion of works, payment for unexpected executed works, and paying for works that do not conform to the expected quality. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, 12.6 is our bit of land. The committee was informed that the Uganda Art Institute has been allocated 10 acres at uh, Naguru with the land title. On opening the boundaries, Uganda Art Institute noted that part of the land is being encroached on by Church of Uganda, uh, Naguru Parish, KCCA, Nakawa Division, and one Mr. Luchamuzi of Luchamuzi Investments. During the committee visit proposed site, it was observed that Uganda Art Institute has already secured part of the land by fencing it off at 75% of the land. The committee recommends, therefore, that Uganda Art Institute should follow up the Ministry of Lands to ensure that the remaining 25% of the land is immediately secured. Uh, the next right on label. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, next is the, and actually almost the last is 12.9, uh, that is performance of ongoing debt finance projects and uh, means of health. And allow me to read this, Right Honorable Speaker. There are seven approach projects in the health sector that are ongoing and being implemented by means of health. That is $180 million of which $129 uh, million has been dispersed, representing a disbursement rate of 71.39% as at 31st December 2021. Despite the improvement in absorption of external borrowed funds, there are still a number of individual projects that were facing low absorption of funds as at 31st December when uh, compared to their initial completion dates. These include the Kalamoja infrastructure development that's key to the establishment of the regional oncology center in Northern Uganda, uh, among others. The committee recommends that the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development and the Ministry of Health should expedite the execution of the Kalamoja infrastructure development project. Not honorable speaker, like I mentioned earlier, we have a specific assignment as a committee, specifically on KDIP 2, and that report is ready. Uh, so we shall delve much uh, into that when we get opportunity on the, the paper. Not honorable speaker, having listened, observed, and some of us going to some of these facilities, or having some of our relatives and friends as patients in some of these facilities. Having noted the inadequate space in some of these facilities, and having seen many of people being flown out of this country, including uh, very, very important people in the positions of power in this country. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, the committee therefore recommends that the request by government to borrow up to 20 million United States dollars, and you got, that's used from the Arab Bank of Economic Development in Africa, but there, and 30 million United States dollars uh, from the South Fund for Development, SFD, and 20 million United States dollars for the construction and equipping of the Uganda Art Institute project be approved 
subject to the recommendations herein. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I beg to report. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, before I open up for debate, uh, in the gallery, in the public gallery, uh, we have Ms. Rushi Mills and uh, Ms. Shiba Sogo, who are co-founders and joint CEOs, CEOs of ASCAT Stand Africa, a non-profit, non-partisan organization, which is dedicated to increasing participation for young people and women in public life in Africa. They have come to observe proceedings of this house. Colleagues join me in welcoming them. Uh, colleagues, uh, there was also an announcement uh, which was very important should have come as part of my communication. Uh, Honorable Susan Amir, would you want to inform colleagues? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the Sports Club of Parliament, we are requesting members of Parliament who are seated here to come for training for your health benefit. And we don't want to wait until it is time to go for competition, then you begin nagging the leadership. Thank you very much. Yeah. So that's, that, that, that's for... <laughs> That's for all uh, disciplines, colleagues. Uh, um, you're invited to start training those who are interested. Uh, the pro I think the different disciplines, you have different captains. Please, the captain will have to issue a rota that has uh, locations for training and time. Okay, so and uh, 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 now let me allow one of our children and and one of our son to clarify on that quickly. Quickly, uh, thank you very much, honorable speakers. Where sports is an individual merit, you cannot choose the relatives, uh, family members to go and represent. Let's make sure you train and you make a required qualification of the standard. In athletics, is one of the most hectic, no ease at all. So we have to be very clear. There is no hitting a churn or running to the speaker office. The selection will be in the stadium, not in the office here. That's one of the things. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, let's stop at that. I think what was important, we wanted to know the screen. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want only to... We have netball, we have basketball, we have athletics and uh, volleyball at Lugogo Indoor Stadium. And, uh, and football is at uh, KCCA grounds. And uh, I invite all of you members, please, to come for your health, but also for December uh, selection. I want to thank you. Time, they need to know the time. Please come out with the career rota. Yes. And you share on platforms of- Share. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, the time is 6 a.m. in the morning. 6 a.m. That's when we start. Okay, when you're on the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Right, one of our speaker and colleagues, we are talking about the health, our health, and I'm happy to hear about sport and netball. netball. I wanted additionally to give the information that right one of our speaker, when we uh, established the gym, I applied for that gym and it is now in place. It is one of those facilities which we encourage members really to use. When I applied for this facility, we had lost one member of parliament. And the essence is that we sit so much, we don't do justice to our health. So those who can go for sport, those who can go for netball, I implore that others go and do gymming for our health. Thank, Thank you. you. So our colleagues, uh, we've taken note of that. And uh, I think Dr. Omangino, the head of Uganda Heart Institute, who is seated on the technical bench, must be happy hearing that indeed MPs are mobilizing for this because we are his candidates. 
Yes. Once we fail to exercise, yes, once we fail to exercise, we are potential candidates of his. Now, colleagues, uh, this role, the tennis parliament, uh, when our specialists at the Uganda Art Institute uh, carried out sophisticated operations, we moved the motion here in tennis parliament, and this house congratulated them. One of the demands at that time was the headquarter. It is in the resolution, uh, not the headquarter. Uh, uh, they are independent, a uh, home whether, where they would be able to take on and carry out more sophisticated operations. Um, at that time, we were informed by Dr. Mangina and team. You know, it was so painful that we lose 500 children every year whom Dr. Mangina and the team send away that go and die in your own way because we don't have where to handle you from. They have the expertise, they have some of the equipment, but they don't have where to operate from. And the day you take a patient at Uganda, these dedicated people trying to even fix you in a corridor to work on you, you know? but they are complicated machines cannot be taken anywhere. It's where you feel the pain and you feel uh, the only way as a legislator. You can save that Ugandan who cannot have capacity to fly to Kenya, fly where is by supporting the Uganda Art Institute. You might bring issues of other areas, you have Rwawa, you have where, but the job they are doing at Uganda Art Institute shouldn't be mixed with whatever is happening on in other parts of the country. So, but correct, the decision is yours. And now I open up the debate for 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'll start with the Honorable Amede Agnes in the corner. Uh, Honorable Rusakero, Honorable Dr. Kamara, uh, I'm going to pick you, colleagues. Eh? Oh, no, I was saying you, Nikosase, he, the one who gets for us money stored so we can put it in Uganda. I think Kosase. Ah, oh, no, you were there. Yes, I, I'm, I'm trying to. Let me first pick those ones. Hey, former Minister of Health, then, then I'll pick Dr. Doha uh, and there. Uh, the rest. Colleagues, I'm going to give you a chance. Uh, thank you. But two minutes each, and clerk, please set the clock. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And I thank the committee for this important report. It is not a coincidence that I speak first. Actually, I have been one of those clients in the Heart Institute, and all those constraints explained in the report are real and are hampering the performance of the doctors at the Heart Institute. Uh, I would have much loved that this, is, this report also touched on expanding regional facilities for the Heart Institute in our regional hospitals. And this should not wait I pray that this, the, the Minister for Health and all those concerned should start work on the same, because this is one of the hard areas for our constituents to come from up our country to come and seek services in the central. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. That's Honorable Rossi. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Arise to support the motion and to thank uh, the committee for their work. Mr. Speaker, I support this because this is about life. I remember in the last parliament when we were giving tribute to Dr. Mangino about the good work he had done, um, we pledged that we would support him. And I think this is the time for us to support the Heart Institute. 
But Mr. Speaker, I want to caution us that uh, even as we do this in good faith as the Parliament of Uganda, it is usually abused when it comes to implementation. A lot of money is lost, either in procurement and all this. So we must be on the watch out that every money that we borrow is actually put to good use for the good of the Ugandans. Mr. Speaker, I, I am one person who sponsored not one, not two, two, but more than three children who by the good help of the, I think the Khartoum government, they have a very good hospital, heart in a hospital in Khartoum. But sometimes the request for about 500,000 to do a bit of small, small shopping here and there, but there are families that cannot even afford 50,000 shillings. And I am hopeful that they coming in and supporting the, the, our own institute in Uganda, such children and such families will have the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure they are taking a note. Some of you have good names taking for people. So colleagues are saying, be cautious. You also don't fall into a trap for those they have issues with. I mean, in technical people, if we approve Uganda Art Institute, you've been having a good name. Yes. Keep it up. Colleagues, uh, I've seen I had picked some of you and your committee members. The practice is very clear. If you're a committee member, please, you don't debate. Whether you signed or you did not. I had Thank Dr. You. Kamara, then Joe. Thank you, right Honorable Speaker, and I rise to support the motion. I have been at Uganda Art Institute many times, and I've seen the constraints. For example, there are only five ICU beds at Uganda Art Institute. Five. When the need probably would... There are also other five HDU beds. As the chairman of Parliamentary Forum on Uncommunicable Diseases, I know that we are in a demographic, demographic transition where non-communicable diseases are accounting for more deaths now than infectious diseases. Therefore, I want to support the motion. I want to support uh, Dr. Magino and the team and hope that we can do this as quickly as possible. I beg to submit. Thank you. Honorable Joel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. So Speaker, I want to salute Dr. Mangino, who is somewhere at the back, for his passion in this field. He has many times advocated that we do a lot more, and this is one of the steps. I just want to emphasize, Mr. Speaker, the, the fact of us being efficacious when it comes to utilizing this money. Many times money is released for a worthy cause, a good project but it ends up being swindled, being misappropriated, and who suffers at the end of the day? The end user. We are hoping that there will be a difference this time around. I also want to emphasize, Mr. Speaker, that we follow the procurement regulations as is. Many of the challenges with the entities we're having in Kosase, people just flout procurement regulations. They decide to do whatever they want to do because they think we have a project to deal with. Finally, Mr. Speaker, with, with your guidance, I think it would be a good thing that we continuously get an update from government on this project, maybe once in two months, so I don't know. That will enable us to track, because many projects set off, you know, Lovoa Hospital is one of those very many, and after, we, we do post-mortem after a year or whatever. So I think it's important that we keep track. Every two months, we get an update, what's happening, so that we know things are moving in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, committee. You know, the committee is very, very important. Um, now, members of the Committee on Health, I want to also give you opportunity. The reason being, this loan also came to the committee as a sectoral committee. So you had your say uh, on Itone Ebomara, and on Ebokutanya, Omara, Katanya, Remricha, then, I picked some here, I'm still rotating. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I rise to support the motion. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm glad 
that finally the Minister of Finance has been able to find opportunity uh, to provide money for the capital development expenditure, just like this one. Uh, personally, I've been at uh, Uganda Heart Institute, uh, where I, I took about two patients there, and you could see the struggles that they have had over the years. And as Ugandans, we really want to domesticate some of this complex uh, medical support. And it would be very, very naive for us uh, not to uh, give this support. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I just would want to, just like other colleagues, to caution us on the elements of implementation. We just don't want this to be another Luboa. And as you've, you've indicated, the Uganda Heart Institute has been a center of excellence and they have done a lot of good work over a period of time. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I just also would like to ask my colleague behind me here, the Honorable Minister of Finance, as I indicated yesterday, to really fast track some of these concessionary loans so that we implement what is in our budget, especially capital development programs. I submit. Thank you, Honorable Katanya. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, I stand here to support the motion for the borrowing of the money for the Heart Institute. Mr. Speaker, the only worry which my friends and colleagues have talked about was the issue of borrowing money. Then by the end of the day, the money, the consumption rate becomes very low. So I want to argue that uh, the, this borrowing, or the construction of the, the unit, we assist at least save some money, which government and some individuals within the country have been spending in India, South Africa, and other countries. And therefore, it assists us to at least have some hope that when you fall sick or when you have a patient, you can easily, or even, if, even yourself, if you fall sick, you can get easily assistance from within the, right, within the country. So I support, but I caution that uh, let, this, let the money be used very quickly. So that we, which has not been, which has not been consumed within a period uh, allocated to it. Thank you. Okay, information allowed. No, you can't say thank you. No, 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 no. Please, please. You see, let me guide on your word, which you know. You see, information, <laughs> information is any reach the submission of the one on the floor. The moment you conclude, and your it means you've already finished. So you cannot get information. It has to be in the middle of the submission. Thank you so much. But Don Evoranya usually knows how to get his way. <laughs> Thank you so much, the right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues. I also stand here to support the motion. Uh, thank you so much, right honorable, for the opportunity. First of all, I would like to thank the doctor and the team. What they're doing at the Uganda Health Institute, they're doing a recommendable job. And uh, this calls for us, all of us as a country, as a parliament, to support this cause. And Chair, last you know, there the, is the, the tendency of borrowing, borrowing, but sometimes you find the utilization of these funds becomes a challenge to government. But this time, I also want to add my vice. First of all, it's, it's a noble cause for us to support Uga, uh, Uganda Health Institute. And two, we really have to utilize this money, use the money for the intended purpose. I also want to add my advice. This huge appetite for borrowing, after borrowing, at the end of the day, you don't utilize. At the end of the day, there are loopholes, people steal the monies. But this time, Chair, I also want to say that the parliament should be updated on how the monies are being, the implementation plan, so that we keep track. And two, this is very, very important for us to have uh, the heart, because very many people in the country are suffering from heart. Personally, I never visited Uganda Heart Institute, 
I see how people struggle with nothing, no space. The working conditions are really very tolerable, not doing well. For, so I'm here to support Thank and you. make sure that the house really passes this uh, loan that will help Thank really you. our people in future. I thank, thank you so much. Honorable uh, Saro Pendi and Honorable James Kubeketeja, Honorable Wokorachi. Oh. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the committee for the work and to state that this particular loan is long overdue. I was in the sector in 2018 when we started talking about a home for the Uganda Heart Institute. And finally, hopefully before 2026, Uganda Heart Institute should be at its home. And right honorable speaker, then they needed 30 acres. Unfortunately, they were only given 11 acres at the now reduced to 10 at Naguru. But right honorable speaker, what I want to state is that Uganda Heart Institute has built capacity over the years. There is no need for referrals abroad, save for maybe 5% or 10% of the complicated cases. But most of these cases can actually be handled here by the specialists who and the staff. Specialists are now 58, and we can continue training. But right on the speaker, the point I want to make, we had recommended because of the specialists who are still few and the need to have them train others, we had recommended that the retirement age for these super specialists be increased to at least 70 if they can continue working. That has not been done by the Minister of Public Service, and I want to call upon them. But Dr. Magino was retired. We couldn't allow him to go, and he's now serving on contract. We need the age of these super specialists who are few and are willing to continue working to work. The Minister of Public is there seated and listening. You are new. We left these issues on the table when I was in the sector. Honorable Hanifa, please follow up. Thank you. Honorable the Minister of State for General Duties. I left these on your table. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to add my voice to the committee's recommendation regarding the Heart Institute. Uh, I would like to assure the members that the, the Dr. Omagin, I know that a few years ago, where there is that Heart Institute, there was some fundamental development that was carried out. And I'd like to urge members to support this loan simply because the Dr. Magino we know is a man who is very pro proactive and very expeditious. So how, uh, how, how I would like really to urge Dr. Magino that maybe you train some others that as you live, they have that kind of art of work. Now, since this land is in Naguru, I'd like to urge members that let's ring fence the land in Naguru, especially when it comes to the Uganda Heart Institute, because we are all candidates to the heart diseases. I submit, thank, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, correct. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable, for this very wonderful opportunity. Right Honorable, like you guided, I realized that I'm a member of National Committee, National Economic Committee. Oh, you remember? So no, I give that one. opportunity to another person. No, Carry one. on. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, yeah, thank you, you very much, Right general. Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, you will join my colleagues in seconding the motion in approving this loan. Right Honorable Speaker, I believe together with uh, most of our my colleagues yeah. here, we have been approached by so many people suffering with the diseases of uh, heart diseases in our constituencies. And many of them, when they are referred to Mulago, to their heart institute, they reach there and sometimes they can't find these services there. They are again referred to India. And then you hear them coming back lamenting until these people die when you see them. And so, right, Honorable Speaker, approving this loan will save so many Ugandans who are suffering with these illnesses. Thank you. Iganga. 
person to Iganga. Let's do one minute with. Eh? Yes, because you're supporting. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, actually, I've been tossing on Nami Sindra. She has been saying my point, but I want to add a voice. We want to <laughs> we want to thank the committee for the good report, and I want to caution uh, the good heart because our people. Yes, but when our ordinary people go there, they will wait for a call from order from above to work on our people. Those who won't be called, uh, who won't have people to back them up, they won't be handled. So I want to caution, they have to handle everyone. That's, as that's why they need the space to be able to work on everyone. Exactly. That has been the biggest thing. Thank Go. you. Uh, thank you, Rector Noel Speaker. My name is Engineer Luke Chauvinesco, MP for Uka North. I'm here to support uh, the motion because this challenge of the heart is uh, cuts across the board. All of us can be candid. Although in this, the government should come up with the ways of even subsidizing the medication. Because people have gone to the Heart Institute, they have been treated, but the medication is too high, the cost of medication. So I presume that in this, we should also handle that, that uh, the medication can be subsidized more so in this regard. Thank you. Colleagues, I now put the question that the resolution of parliament authorized government to borrow up to 20 million United States dollars from the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, 30 million United States dollars from the Saudi Fund for Development, and 20 million United States Development for the construction and equipping of the Uganda Heart Institute project uh, be passed by parliament. We authorize government to borrow the above. Those in favor say aye, those against say no. Aye. Now, colleagues, the eyes have it. Colleagues, I have, I have allowed over 20 people to speak and everyone was, you know, everyone was supporting. So, Honorable uh, Tinka uh, Simre, you have just walked in. No, please, please. Honorable Tinka Simre, you have just walked in and you start us with procedure. Please, next item. Item number four. Yeah. Item number four, statement by Minister on releases to the road fund for first quarter of financial year 2023. Minister of Finance. Colleagues, you don't just enter house, you reach in and you start on procedure. We have been here since 2, 2 p.m. So please. Honor, I will give you a chance, but you don't just enter house, you start with procedure. So please. Honor, Minister of Finance. Honor, Minister of Finance, please. Right, Honorable Speaker. I beg to present a statement to Parliament on the disbursement schedule of road maintenance fund and the status of regulations on operationalization of the road fund. Please, Honorable Minister, we are waiting for the road fund statement. Right, Honorable Please, Speaker, yeah. during the plenary sitting of Tuesday, 9th August 2022, the matter of national importance was raised by Honorable Opio Samuel, MP Kole uh, County North, on delayed release of funds for road maintenance despite the looming rainy season, which would worsen the state of seasonal roads. The speaker directed me to avail members of parliament with its first schedule of road maintenance funds the various local governments 
and regulations on operationalization of the road fund on the preceding day, Wednesday, 10th August 2022. Disbursement schedule of road maintenance funds. In line with the expenditure limits for this quarter, I mean the first quarter, the Uganda Road Fund via their letter URF stroke EDMOF stroke 050 stroke 22, dated 28th July 2022, which have already circulated, submitted their releases warrant for this quarter, which included Uganda shillings, 6 billion, 280 million for maintenance of the district urban and community access roads, commonly called Duka roads, and Uganda shillings, 5,756,884,923 Uganda shillings for maintenance of the national roads. Subsequently, the Uganda Road Fund released the schedule for Uganda shillings, 6.28 billion shillings for maintenance of the Duka networks, which includes funds for cities, municipalities, and districts, local governments. The Uganda Road Fund has in their letter DUCAR 001-2223, dated 10th August 2022, addressed to accounting officers of municipal councils city councils and this local government indicated the revised schedule of funds, QRF designated agencies for maintenance of DUCAS for quarter one, 2022-2023. Right Honorable Speaker, due to budgetary constraints experienced in this quarter and the need to further prioritize the national road network, Uganda shillings 18.285 billion of additional expenditure limits. This is additional, was released to the URF, the Uganda Road Fund, for emergency maintenance works on the national road network. The issuance of funds for the DUCAS have been delayed on the IFMIS, the Integrated Financial Management System, because of changes in the business process to enable seamless flow of funds to local governments. These funds will now be directly remitted to the local government treasury single account holding account, account number 0033-001-380004 in Bank of Uganda. The reason for this change is that we would not have the same account for collecting revenues, serving the purposes of dispersing these revenues. With this done, we expect the issuance of funds to have been completed by Friday, 19th August, 2022. Right Honorable Speaker, a copy of the disbursement schedules to the local governments from the Uganda Road Fund before this August House. I've already saturated it by this report. Regulations on operationalization of the road fund. What will our speaker, before I present this, I wish to update the house that my ministry was invited to appear before the Committee on Finance, Planning and Economic Development on 2nd August 2022. And we presented this position. The honorable chairperson shall include this in his report to the house. Right on our speaker and members, as you are aware, Parliament on 12th May 2022 passed the following resolutions. Number one, the Minister of Finance should operationalize the road fund in accordance with section 49 of the Act by the end of the financial year 2021-2022. Number two, the Minister of Finance should ensure funds collected but the Uganda Revenue Authority, URA, as road user charges are remitted directly to the fund as stipulated in section 213 of the Act. Number three, 
the minister presents parliament the regulations made under section 49 of the act. Subsequently, the minister wrote to the attorney general on 12 May 2022, seeking legal opinion on the apparent conflicting legal provisions in the Road Fund Act 2008, National Forestry and Tree Planting Act 2003, Public Finance Management Act, PFMA 2015, and the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda 1995. The Attorney General's Office in response dated 12 May 2022, advised that both the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda 1995 and the Public Finance Management funds apart from the consolidated funds and we are therefore not in a conflict. A total of 15 special funds have been created by the various acts of parliament and they include the following. Uganda Road Fund, there's a land fund, there's a tree fund, there's a rural communication development fund, we have the energy fund, we have the HIV AIDS Trust Fund. We have a business technical education and vocational training fund. We also have a rural education fund. We have a national environment fund. We have a tourism development fund, immigration fund. We have judiciary fund. You have project preparation fund, contingency fund and petroleum fund. However, only the contingencies and the petroleum funds have been operationalized. Right on our speaker, whereas the above special funds were legally created, it's no longer tenable to operationalize these funds, given the current trends, reforms, and the potential negative consequences. My ministry has implemented a number of PFM reforms aimed at improve, improving fiscal discipline, budget credibility, and effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policies. These include, among others, program planning and budgeting, and the Treasury single account. As a result, government has been unable to operationalize the above funds, majorly due to resource constraints, but also to consolidate the benefits of these PFM reforms. Implementation of the single of the, of the treasury single account has improved efficiency and effectiveness in liquidity management. Operationalizing these special funds will therefore present the following challenges. Number one, erode the benefits registered from introduction of the treasury single account of efficient and effective liquidity management. Number two. It would lead to unrealistic budgeting and planning by reducing the budget flexibility and the fiscal space. Resources are locked up in special funds, reducing money available for spending by other government entities that may not have funds at a particular time. Number three, it undermines the benefits envisaged in the implementation of the program planning approach under the National Development Plan 3, as it promotes the silo mentality by scattering resources and could lead to suboptimal utilization of the limited government, uh, government cash resources. Number four, it would lead to duplication of the treasury management function, coupled with unnecessary fund management costs and delays, because each of these funds constitutes a cost on management. Judiciary risky and pose accountability challenges. For instance, the Uganda Road Fund is not accountable for the funds released to it, but rather the executing agencies, the local governments. Six, to set a precedent, of all other funds leading to breakup of the Uganda Consolidated Fund into many small funds, which is unsustainable. And seven, 
legalized fiscal indiscipline associated with the poor management of special funds. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, on that above account, my ministry is in the process of engaging cabinet to reconsider operationalization of special funds as we assess the benefits accruing from implementation of the Treasury single account. We shall inform this August House as soon as the cabinet provides us with a guidance on how to proceed. Attached to this presentation, right honorable, we have presented uh, our, the releases by the road fund to the accounting officers in district local governments by the letter that I've already mentioned. We have also attached um, another list to the municipal councils issued by the road fund all the municipal councils have been covered. We are also attaching <coughs> a list to all the city councils. Um, and this is all endorsed by uh, the Uganda Road Fund. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, colleagues, as you know, uh, for such a statement, and um, I just want my colleague to understand why it is always important to listen. Whenever such a statement is presented, we give the first right of call to the member. There's always no need uh, to. You know, so when I will appeal, you, are you satisfied with the response? Because you're the one who raised. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hon uh, Honorable Minister, for the, the statement of the disbursement. However, I would like to seek some clarification. On the statement, it's indicated that uh, a schedule of 6 billion 280 million has been provided for roads in the districts in the cities and the municipalities. However, when you look at what has been presented, cities, it's indicated 280 million, municipalities, 806 million, and the district roads, 3,375,000,000. When you total all this, it comes to 4,461,000,000, not 6,280,000,000 as stated. There is therefore a deficit of 1,000,000,000, 819 million. So we'd like to seek your clarification because your statement says the schedule is for 6 billion 280 million, but it's only for 4 billion 461 million. Secondly, the statement further indicates that there will be additional releases. Uh, Uganda Road Fund says that they are going to work with MoFED for additional releases within this quarter. I want to find out again whether there will be those releases in this quarter. And then thirdly, what has been provided is a schedule for releases to the districts. But the town councils and the sub-counties, there are no releases. I just want you to reconfirm that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Minister, do you know that what you are doing, you're just telling the public that it should be MOPs to go and work on their roads? Clearly. No, that's what you are doing. Because if you say this man is what you've released for roads, then you're just telling me I should go and I work on roads in, in Rwanda, no constituency. And, and I want us to be honest on such a matter. Rains are coming. Huh? Rains are already here. Honor, I, want, I, I, I want you to be honest. Maybe we can send a committee to visit Kayunga, your own constituency. And we see. Then number two, number two, if you have not yet amended the law, but you come here and you say we shall not implement, and you want it to go on the record of parliament, that you can never, you're not going to implement, and yet you know you have not amended it. 
And these funds you are complaining about were your own creation. They were proposed by government. They were not proposed by these members because we don't have powers under the constitution. It's you. So what do you want us to do? For God's sake. You are just you, you are just sending these MPs into trouble, first trouble. Anyway, colleagues, I need to hear from you, colleagues. Honorable John Musira, Honorable Jessica Babiku, Honorable Nathan Vyanyama, and Toroko, and Lilian Abin. Then I come back. I want to thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My vote did not go to waste. And it is the first time that I'm speaking ever since you came into the chair. Mr. Speaker, sir, the minister has given the statement. You rightly noted that it is now the duty of MPs. And indeed, I've been lost from parliament for some time, working on the roads in my constituency. Maybe the minister is not aware that even the little money released, which always delays anyway, it may come into the second or third quarter and the district has no way. I am formerly district chairperson and I know this, by the way. Even then, the programs, the money is released for, it is only for routine maintenance. You don't have periodic or if it is there, it is about 1% and no rehabilitation completely. Now, comparatively also, is the minister aware, Mr. Speaker, that one kilometer of a district road, the money given allocated and compared to the UNRWA road for routine maintenance is thousands of percentages apart. He should know that. So the districts are grappling with the collapsed infrastructure of roads, the sub-counties, and mainly so the town councils. I wish that the minister consulted the committee to visit the rural areas and see for himself. I beg to submit, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Clark said for me two minutes for each. Yes, I think. Was one of our babiku just now? Thank you, right on our speaker. Richard, I will speak uh, my little hope, which I had from yesterday when you, you directed the minister to come and present this report has disappeared. The problems that I have, that the people of Ajumani have, cannot be handled by the, with the two and the five. Yesterday I was here, people already demonstrating. The statement of the state minister is confirming what the minister of finance said, that we are limping economically. Therefore, our government should come and declare that our budget cannot be implemented so that as leaders we shall not be put under pressure. Right on our speaker and colleagues, let's not pretend if we don't have money, let government go and declare what is 25 million per quarter. Right on our speaker. So that is my request government should not babysit itself to tell us the truth. If we don't have money to implement the budget, let us tell the citizens. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rotary right Speaker. I am at pains because we fought so hard to be like any other country in Africa because our roads were in a bad state. So when the issue of road fund came up, we all convinced by these ministers. When I call them these ministers who don't have a map of Uganda on their desk, I am absolutely right. Because if Honorable Gorobi took a ride and go to Karuma 
and see from Karuma or Rio to Pakwat, you would see lack of maintenance. Vehicles have diverted to the national park. That road is forgotten completely. We used to take us 12 hours from Kampala to Arua. That used to be now four, four, five. Now it has gone back to Europe. You cannot compare, he was talking, fire fund, trees fund. You can't compare road fund with any other fund. You can't. Honorable Gorobi, we have suffered. I say that if I can't get a place in the government school, I can go to private. If I can't have a place for my mother in the hospital, government hospital, I will go to private. But for the roads, it's a mandate of government. Go to Kenya, for example, when you see Kenya. Kenya was in a worse state than us. Tanzania was in a worse state than us. But when they talk of that road fund, of saying, add 100 shillings on one liter of fuel, and that money is reserved for maintenance. When you go and calculate, it is 1.2 trillion. Why can't we reserve such a money for road maintenance? Some of us were here in Parliament for a number of times because of roads. You make a road in the community road, you are there. You fly where I, mean, I can tell you. But when I see ministers of finance seated in those armchairs, they. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Ah, I had picked in Toroko and the uh, and Abe. Uh, honorable, thank you, White Honorable Speaker. Uh, wait a bit, Honorable Pendi is the second of the motion has spoken, the second of your motion. Honorable Toroko, thank you, Right Honorable. Say that uh, I, I am a little bit disappointed by the report from the minister, though. Thank you so much for bringing it so that we know what is happening. Right, Honorable Speaker, roads are very important in our communities. Everybody is demanding roads, and when they are bad, they call us leaders, as if we are the ones who have all the answers for these roads. Uh, recently, uh, currently, we have too much rain in the village, but there is no money for repairing district roads. Uh, we are given, uh, we are given uh, machines at the district, but they have no fuel. And uh, for, to maintain the roads, the engineers tell you there's no fuel. And the man, some of us are coming from hard to reach districts. It's even worse. Terrain is difficult and uh, the district cannot maintain those roads. For example, in my district, they have given us only 30 million. 30 million to Toroko district is nothing. So I, I beg. I beg, Right Honorable Speaker, that uh, I beg, Right Honorable Speaker, that the, the money for road fund should be increased. The money for road fund should be increased. Even this one shilling should go to three shillings because of the fuel increment. You know, the the price of the price of the fuel has increased. Secondly, right honorable speaker in 2019. But honorable, yes. What we are arguing here is even the little we put, they've diverted it somewhere else. So we should be fighting that what we put is brought back. Brought back, yes. Uh, uh, and an honorable minister, you are self. Thank you, honorable. Anne. Thank you. So, honorable minister, you remember this issue, Minister of Finance tried to dodge it in each and every way. You even wrote the Attorney General. The Attorney General wrote back and said, the Constitution commands you. So, you know, th then you're making it difficult for me to preside over a house where a minister can come on the floor and say, I'm not going to implement a law. Then I cannot continue presiding over this house. I can't. <laughs> Thank you very much, the right honorable speaker. Order, colleagues. Right honorable speaker. Order, colleagues. I must say that I, I am standing here as a woman who has lost hope. Right honorable speaker, if we categorically analyze 
the challenges we have incurred in our constituencies because of the poor roads. We have lost people. These members of parliament, some of them have been very generous to even buy ambulances, but they break down in like two, three months. Right, Honorable Speaker, 25 million, for me, I feel it's a joke. And really, if we can sit here and even continue deliberating on these matters, for me, I think it is very important that this house really takes action. We have done all these things before, but action is not taken. But I think we need to remember the sick people that we are passing the money for, the heart problem issues, that they will not even make it to the Heart Institute with bad roads. We need to remember that the farmers who are right now in the garden trying to plant something cannot transport what they have produced. We need to remember that our children have lost lives when they are struggling to go to school. Right, Honorable Speaker, I therefore would like to request that the right on um, the Honorable Minister here really tries to act nice as Ministry for Finance Thank you. With a better Thank procedure you. on how we are going to handle uh, these issues. Honorable Thank Kupa, you. Honorable Amero, Honorable Taylor. Co colleagues, I'm going to give you a chance. Please. Th please. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I don't know what happens to when people go to the front bench. Honorable Ngolobi was a strong ardent supporter when we were creating the road fund. But now he's speaking in tongues. I have. We have got no hope because we have the powers until we sense a minister on this one here. That's when they will open the eyes. Right, Honorable Speaker, you have put it right that the Attorney General, the legal advisor of the, of the government of Uganda, has made a pronouncement. Who are we now to discuss an illegality brought here by Mr. Lugolobi, Honorable Lugolobi? So, right, Honorable Speaker. We are just, just wasting time here. Members, let us rise up to occasion and say that the Minister of Finance. For violating and violating the law. I don't want us to near the here and there. People are suffering. The roads are not passable. And like you have put the right on the board speaker. It's you and me. They are coming that the road is very bad. Soroti, Soroti Yundra office has only received 40 million from the 1 billion they have been receiving. But here comes the minister after even getting the advice from the attorney general. What I stopped him from bringing the law if you want to amend the law? Let us not generalize this is the issue of the road fund. So, right, Honorable Minister, Honorable Speaker, colleagues, we need to start censoring ministers, especially starting with this one here. If we can pack money for other institutions, Lugoa, everywhere, but for this one here, we are failing. It is you and me, like Honorable Bianima has put here. The road make us to come back here, unless you don't want to come back to Parliament. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Mero. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Colleagues, uh, you see, when I allow a motion, then I will have suffocated all of you. I want, I wanted your voices to be heard. Honorable Amero. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, like the rest of the colleagues have spoken, I think there's a problem that happens to some people. Honorable Rukorovi was a very good person before he became a chairperson of budget and subsequently becoming a minister. But now because he's driving a free car, but he doesn't know how much it costs to take to the garage. He doesn't know come here and talk whatever he wants to talk. I want to stand with my colleague Honorable Cooper that we move a motion of censure for some of these ministers who are spoiling the name of the party of NRM, we work hard to get to the vote, and then no. you come and play around with what we have worked for. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker Co colleagues, we need money. What we need is money for road. Let us remain on focus. Let's, let's remain focused on getting money. Okay? Uh, 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 speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, those voices are coming up because we have put up with enough comedy from that front bench. For so many times, we are stomaching insults 
caused by the front bench. How can someone come? A fund which was created out of thorough research, you stand on the floor of parliament and say we are not implementing with a clear law advised onto you. Honorable Gulu, this is a joke of a century. I want to advise you clearly that the fund must operate, short of which you are carrying the consequences. Thank you. Honorable Kangwaje. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I think uh, my brother, Honorable Minister, will, has easily seen and felt and even sensed what is happening in our constituencies. Good enough is a sitting member of parliament and a minister at the same time. Honorable Gorobi, you know, some of us where we come from, a district like Isinjiro, be given 20 million. You can imagine. How do you expect such people to go? How do you expect such people to perform? How do you expect that country of ours, the one we are trying to enjoy, to benefit really? Me was of the view, right from the speaker, that if there is any problem, if there is any problem, as in far as this ministry is concerned, the gentleman should stand and give us real information on the pro. We see how best we can get this money so that our, our activities can continue working and moving on well without having any challenge. Without that, we shall not allow this to continue. We want money and our people must move. We need developments in our country. We heard Yanima talked about it. But the other time, we used to have this money. And even our constituents, our constituents were doing well. This is the time we need money for the good of our country. Very true that no job at all. I thank you. Yantonde and Mutiwa. Mutiwa Joffrey. Thank you, Mr. Then, Speaker. First of all, I feel sorry for my honorable minister of finance. But what I say, I'm honorable, your time is counting. And if you like, Mr. Chair, honorable colleague is protected. Like, honorable speaker, my argument is that we reject the report from the minister. It goes back because the, the, the cabinet minister, who is the honorable minister of uh, finance, to Yes, to give us a proper way out. Because right now we are, we are actually lamenting. No, Kori, the problem is well known. Honorable Enos, whatever, whatever Honorable Gorovi is presenting here is final. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Thank you for your guidance, Mr. Speaker. We have full authority. Thank you for your guidance, Mr. Speaker. But what I wanted to say is that we already know the problem. At least in the committee, we called the, the team and they told us they have no money. It's now either parliament to decide. On, on the next course of action. Otherwise, attacking Ugo will not give us an answer because they don't have the resources. I therefore call on, wait a minute, when I remember. Yes, let's have the. I, I rest. Honorable Mutiwa. Thanks very much, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, I want to join the colleagues who have lost hope. Right Honourable Speaker, like in my district of Butaledia, the whole of last financial year we received only 80 million shillings to work on all the district roads. At that time, they were telling us that because of COVID, the collection of money was not enough and we expected some better releases in this new financial year. Right Honourable Speaker, is telling us that. There's no money. And when I checked on the releases, my district gets 25 million shillings. There's a very number of roads that are rather down. Many bridges are uh, down because of the rains that are happening currently. I don't know right when I will speak what we shall do. I would request the minister to come up and tell us the strategy that they have as cabinet that we will see that money is sent to the districts and our districts are able to work on the roads because the situation is uh, right out of hand currently. I thank you, right? Linus. Uh, thank you, uh, right, honorable speaker. Uh, it's very here for loans, they are very excited, but 
when matters that affect our nationals, ministers give us a deaf ear. For example, this money that goes to road fund is levied on fuel. And, and that is what the act states. So the minister should explain to us where this money that is levied, that's supposed to go to road fund, go. Because, for example, we have a, a sub-county called Masindi Port. We received only one million. A big sub-county, only one million to fix the roads, yes. It's quite a shame. And we sh as members of parliament, we should not allow this to happen. We always come here, lament, lament, but nothing happens. Because we lament a lot, the ministers take us for a joke. We don't, we don't, the, the issue of censor, we have failed to censor anyone. So that one can't help us. But we need, we, they should explain how they utilize this money. Because we need money to work on roads. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, that Honorable colleague next to Wanda. Yes, Honorable. Yeah, um, Honorable Speaker, this is my maiden speech. Since you ascended to become our Deputy Speaker of Parliament, I want to congratulate you for that. Um, Honorable Speaker, the matter of road fund, as you have guided, is a matter of debating illegality. And I, I wanted to inquire through you, can this house take time to discuss illegality? And therefore, if the house you're presiding over cannot discuss illegality, I would rather propose that through you, the Honorable Minister for Finance goes back to cabinet and comes up with, if it is supplementary, to redeem this country. Because throughout this country, all members of parliament, the different constituencies are suffering from lack of proper access community, district, and UNRWA roads. And this cry has been seen here. And through you, I would rather propose again that if there's no supplementary, we better bring back the Constituents Development Fund. Honorable money was appropriated. This is a matter of release. It's not a supplementum. Now, we appropriated here. Now, let me conclude. If this money is there, then that means the minister needs to be put to order and count back to this parliament that we need our money for the road fund. Otherwise, our role as members of parliament is not to work on roads. Our role are not to be used to construct any road in this country. I submit. Uh, colleagues, 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 the way you feel is how I feel. Honorable Minister, and I think this has to be very clear, there is no way it can remain on the record of parliament that you came here and you said you cannot implement a law because you're going to propose an amendment. What if we reject the amendment? Because the amendment has to be done by parliament. So I think that was the first wrong step. Uh, that is bordering arrogance. That is bordering arrogance, telling a house that you cannot implement a law, which was proposed by government, signed by government, and we are only saying implement, and then you come tell us that you can't. No, no, no. That one is, uh, that one is please. That one cannot be accepted. Number two, honorable minister. This is a fund with a clear source of funding. Like only what I know has brought it. So meaning you diverted money from this fund. So all we are asking for is return the money for the fund. Number three, Minister, I want to hear what you say about what colleagues have said before I open up again.
Reverend Speaker, I've been in this parliament for some time, but I've not received the roasting like the one I've seen today. <laughs> and that sends a very strong message uh, to me and the Minister of Finance. And I've consulted the, the lead of government business that we are going to consult the cabinet further on this matter. that the problem actually emanates from the challenge that we are having on the cash flows and other challenges, as you know, already in the economy. In fact, we are ready to come and present a paper on this. You have seen it has been dramatically reduced from the usual 25% of the budget appropriation to about 19 percent and the net effect is actually felt in almost all sectors of the economy but as i indicated in this paper the situation is being constantly reviewed and you saw that i indicated that we have given an additional cash, cash limit to the national road infrastructure maintenance to unura the quarter is not yet over additional cash limits can be provided. Procedure? Um, That's good procedure. Uh, uh, procedure, procedure. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the procedure issue I'm raising, it is I who brought a motion on this floor that was debated, that was seconded, and Right Honorable Speaker even supported with the guidance of the Attorney General. The Attorney General guides cabinet, sits in cabinet. The minister has come here defiant against the that had been resolved where his senior minister conceded. Right, Honorable Speaker, you even directed the minister what you know, what this house needs are the regulations. This fund was created by an act in 2015. I don't know how many of us, how many of us were here? Uh, yes. Honor of Yanya is correcting yes. that is 2008. Oh, 2008. Yes. So, right, Honorable Speaker, the Ministry of Finance has consistently refused to operationalize this fund for personal reasons. Just two weeks ago, we passed here your request for 250 billion for Roku. Right, Honorable Speaker. And we imagine all the roads in the country, 6 billion is released. Today, Right, Honorable Speaker, we are interfacing with the Minister of Works. There are certificates that are not paid, Right, Honorable Speaker. Every day, this country pays 25 million shillings. Every day, for every certificate that is not paid. We are bringing a report to this house. A lot of money, Right, Honorable Speaker, is being spent for non-payment of these certificates and others. So right on for us to continue debating this matter, where the minister has defied your own directive. Right honorable speaker. And right honorable speaker on that note, we are going to give notice to the clerk. Unless we shake up this ministry of finance, right honorable speaker, we are not going to move as a house that a speaker can give directives and your directives are defied and we as members look on where else or what is our relevance as a parliament, right honorable speaker? What is our relevance, right honorable speaker? So, right honorable speaker, is it procedural right for us to continue listening to the minister and even debating a matter that is a clear slap on your face that you actually took place? Thank you, right honorable speaker. Thank you very much. No, I had around uh, before 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 I guide on her procedure. I had allowed on a way on procedure. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I stand on a point of procedure matter. Honorable Speaker, I am armed here with the Public Finance and Management Act. Honorable Speaker, it is a shame that this House passed the Appropriation Act based on forecast information or financial projection 
revenue projection, expenditure projection, annual work plan, activity plan, procurement plan. But Honorable Speaker, as we speak now, the minister has conceded that they are violating the Appropriation Act, which was a regard and contempt of parliament. Honorable Minister, you are my friend, and I feel pity that I'm saying this in front of you. Honorable Speaker, as we speak now, the cash release does not conform to Public Finance and Management Act. Most entities are receiving 10%, and this breeds corruption and serious corruption because we approved here for a government plan for every vote. We approved here a recruitment plan for every vote, but what most votes are receiving is salary only, and the wage which is not more than 10%. Honorable Speaker, we cannot sit here. If government wants us to amend appropriation act, they should bring the bill here. It is not, I, I know, Honorable Speaker, that the economy is hard worldwide, but what government is doing, let me tell you, colleagues, through the speaker. The government is suppressing cash release in order to stabilize inflation. If you do that, you are going to affect growth and lead forward. That is the approach government adopted because we received a cash flow projection from Uganda Revenue Authority for the financial year for every quarter. Based on the performance of the previous year, we received a proposal, Honorable Speaker, for government to draw down from consolidated funds. We received a proposal for government to draw down from petroleum funds. We received a proposal for domestic borrowing. Have you implemented all that? Nothing implemented. Thank what, you, Honorable. So um, uh, is it procedure for this parliament to be here? When is the government is violating the Appropriation Act? Thank you. Is it correct? Thank you. Thank you for it. They are around the procedure. So, yeah, yeah. Honorable Minister, you see, you see how you have even pushed on a way, can you? You know? But, uh, colleagues, that's why I had allowed the Honorable Minister to first give us a response, and then we see how best to move forward. Isn't it? Now, Honorable Minister, you can resume. Um, then I see whether, indeed, you are moving in the right direction to always be heard in this house. Otherwise, uh, this house has very many weapons. It can use on, you know, beyond censure, we have other weapons we can use. And I hope we don't invoke. No, let, let the minister. Rob, yeah, right when I was speaking. No, Rob, let's, let's first listen to the minister. I, I think I should make clarification that what we have in the URF are road maintenance funds. They do not include funds for road rehabilitation and the upgrading of roads. From this area, we actually have, we spend about 1.6 trillion on road construction alone, which is not necessarily in the road fund. So I'm trying to account for the money that comes from this collection order. indicated in the road order. fund. Order. They brought the point of order, you on our report? Mm. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Is it in order for the minister to think that we don't know what happens? The money that we appropriated, we know what funds are for Uganda Road Fund. We know how much money is supposed to be collected from, from petroleum products that, 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 that are actually sold in this country. So this idea of meandering, talking about road construction, she is not, should not be tolerated. But I want to tell you, right, Honorable Speaker, that what, what the minister and what government actually is doing is like building home without a road. How do you deliver services in this country without any road? So is it in order for this minister to think that we don't understand what we appropriated? No. Thank you. No. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, however much you try to explain, in, Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, in my constituents, if I can use it as an example, I don't have any central government road. I'm in a rift valley. The money you give, the money you've given me, Toma, <laughs> I'm now the one who is government. I'm the one doing bridges. 
I'm, um, I'm providing carverts, um, and it's happening to each one of us. And if I can tell you, our opponents have already started. And that's what they are using. Because especially for the new MPs, they are saying, no, the former MP was working on roads, government. And the other ones who are also saying, how colleagues, this one cannot fight. This one cannot fight for your road. And Irugoro is coming here and is confirming properly how we want to give you the money. So, so in short, you're condemning all these MPs into Rossi. One of the minister, let me make this very clear. They had a point of order. Uh, one of the minister, let me make this very clear. Take our message to cabinet. Take our message to cabinet. On Tuesday, on Tuesday, give us a response of what you as a central government has resolved after listening to our voices here on Tuesday. You bring a statement responding to the sentiments of colleagues here. That statement will guide the House on what to do next. Next item. Yeah, item number seven. Motion. For avoidance of doubt, I think I should repeat that. That statement, which you will bring on Tuesday, will guide the House on what to do next. Next item. Item number seven, motion for adoption of the report of the Committee of Gender, Labor and Social Development on a motion for resolution of parliament urging government to respond to the plight of Karamojong children enslaved in street begging and child labor. Honorable Chairperson, Committee on Gender, 20 minutes. Uh, colleagues, 20 minutes is 20 minutes. We've been with this report. I don't expect the chair to read for us. I hope you revise it and you'll be able to debate. Thank so, you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, before I can embark on the presentation of this report, allow me to lay on table the minutes and the copy of the report. I beg to lay. Right Honorable Speaker, this is a report of the Committee on Gender, Labor and Social Development on a motion for a resolution of parliament urging government to respond to the plight of Karamojong children enslaved in street begging and child labor. Right Honorable Speaker, allow me to take the members to page two. Uh, no, I won't take you to page two. I implore the members to read the background and the introduction. But uh, right honorable speaker, allow me to take members to page to page four, findings, observations, and recommendations. Right honorable speaker, five one, we were establishing the extent of trafficking of children in Uganda. And uh, I have a table which reports the submission by Uganda to the United Nations that paints a picture of the number of street children that have been withdrawn over the years. But when you look at that table, right honorable speaker, while the figures give an indication of the children rescued, they neither reveal the actual number of children on the street, nor state their districts of origin, or whether the same children we are not re-trafficked. Right, Honorable Speaker, if we went to page, if I went to page uh, seven, Right, Honorable Speaker, our observation as a committee uh, on third paragraph on observations is that the absence of reliable data affects proper planning, resource allocation, programming, and the designing of appropriate interventions, difficult, leaving these children in a limbo practically. The dearth of statistics is made worse, partly due to laborious process of obtaining a birth certificate that is intended, right honorable speaker, to offer the people of Uganda 
an identification uh, uh, and, and, and a nationality and a citizenship. The lack of these reliable statistics is also an indictment against the government for failure to notice some of its most vulnerable human beings. Right, Honorable Speaker, our recommendation on that observation is one, that the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development and the Uganda National Bureau of Statistics should carry out an audit of all street children in the country periodically starting from within 12 months from the date of the adoption of this report. Two, that the Ministry of Internal Affairs through the police should investigate, arrest and prosecute child traffickers. Three, that the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the National Identification and Registration Authority should put in place measures to ease the process of acquiring birth certificates as a means of identity and nationality and citizenship. Right, Honorable Speaker, we established, we established the factors responsible for the presence of children on the street, and we noted that the phenomenon of migration from Karamoja was not a new one. Over the years, Karamoja have Karamojong have removed Karamojong. Procedure. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the chairperson is presenting a very sensitive report. Right Honorable Speaker, this report majorly touches the two ministries, gender and Karamoja. But Right Honorable Speaker, if you check the front bench, none of those two ministries is represented. So Right Honorable Speaker, through you, are we proceeding right, Right Honorable Speaker, when the two ministries are not represented at all, yet they have enough manpower or manpower in those ministries. Thank you. Honorable Solomon, uh, it related to this, sir, please. Right, Honorable Speaker, we had an agreement in Parliament that whenever we have a session, and this was stated clearly by the Speaker, that if we have a sitting in this Parliament, we shall have 30% of the front bench representing government and right of eight two members and i think 30 percent is not demanding too much from government right now speaker is it possible right for us to to come and we continue working with the only three people no people on the front bench i only see this type of formation, maybe in the soccer where you have only two people in the front, is it procedure right for us to operate when we have only Thank you. two ministers? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, right on, Prime Minister, uh, this order paper came out early. I discussed it with your representatives in the Office of Read of Government Business and uh, the Office of Read of Opposition. He's here is my witness. Where, where are ministers for Karamoja Affairs? Right, Honorable Speaker. Okay. Most, some of the ministers sent me information that they were on the issues of finance with the finance minister. They had sent me their apologies. But right now, I've just sent to call the Minister of Gender and Minister of Kalamoja to come and, and internal affairs to come and stay here for right. Parliament because of this paper. I'll yeah. just call in now. Clarification. Honorable Sisiroga. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I think this is a fundamental issue. And uh, I, when you were uh, government chief whip before you became the deputy speaker, you lobbied very hard to have the cabinet expanded. And I remember you called my house very late at night to sponsor a motion with Honorable Fox O'Doyle. And right, Honorable Speaker, I want you now that you are speaker to convince the house that we moved in the right. Ensure that 
the, the, the people were properly represented in the cabinet so that any time we have a session, that would be a minister in the house to answer to some of the problems. Now, right honorable speaker, do you think we should continue or we should review the earlier position so that we reduce the number of ministers? Because there's no need for us to have 82 ministers and the highest in the region. And we don't have even a single one from any ministry to represent the ministry in any debate. Right, Honorable Speaker, this is shameful to our country. And the, the resources are being used to make sure that these ministers are given enough facilities to operate. And here we are every day, right, Honorable Speaker, we are lamenting until when. So I think it is important, right, Honorable Speaker, that you guide the House that you, we may have to ask you diplomatically to seek audience with the Every day we are lamenting, we are quarreling with ourselves, and sometimes the government chief whip have to stand up to answer to some of uh, the problems of the different ministries. And now I can see the third deputy prime minister is now suffering the same disease that the former uh, government chief whip have suffered, that she has to struggle to answer. So, right, honorable speaker, thank can you. we bring this to an end? Uh, thank, uh, you. thank you, right, honorable speaker. Thank you, honorable colleague. Um, the honorable government chief whip yesterday on the floor uh, informed us how he would be having a handover today uh, to his colleague. So, he's in Nakasero State House for the handover. I have a Uh, I'm unable, I'm constrained to continue with the house yes. when I have only two people on the front bench. So, house adjourned uh, to tomorrow at 2 p.m. And uh, right on our prime minister, we shall have a meeting over this month. How am I? How am I? How am I?